thanks for joining us, Steve. How have you been keeping in these uh, strange times? Yeah, not too bad. It's um, been nice to get a bit of downtime. Obviously, we'd like to be back at the football, but it's uh, quite a hectic season, so it's also quite nice to have a bit of downtime and sort of see my wife for once. And what, what kind of things have you been up to keeping fit, I assume? Yeah, I've had quite a structured day, to be honest. Um, wake up and uh, sort of early morning do a, a bit of an aerobic workout, a sort of Joe Wicks type workout. Um, have a quick shower, a bit of downtime, and then go out for quite a long walk. Um, so I do most of my exercise work in the morning and then sort of downtime in the afternoon. Um, we, my, my wife's working from home anyway. Um, so late in the afternoon, I literally just pop back out for a very quick round the block with her for her, a bit of a break for herself. Um, and then it's sort of dinner and, and chill out and watch telly and spend time together, really. So it's been quite, I've tried to have a, quite a structured day, to be honest, but get my exercise in as well. I think I found as well, it's surprising at how fast the time goes when you're at home as well, isn't it? It does if you've got things to do. I say, if, if I didn't have a structured day and my exercise didn't take up most of my morning, then it might be a little bit different. But I've kept myself quite active and quite structured. So um, it has actually gone quite quickly for me. And my wife's been quite surprised how well I've coped with it. Um, so you've been a part of Exit City Coaching Team for almost a year now. Um, I think you joined last June. Um, and you joined in quite a unique situation in terms of you came in and we didn't actually have any goalkeepers. Um, yeah. <laughs> did having that opportunity, was that part of what attracted you to the role, having the opportunity to, you know, be part of selecting those keepers? Um, no, it was just the way it worked out, really. It was a club that I was keen to come to. I'd, I'd had a conversation previously with with Matt, um, and it didn't work out for whatever reason at that particular time. So it's, it's the club that I'd um, had my eye on and was, was keen to come and work at, just because it's it's a very well-established, um, well-run, well-organised football club, um, beautiful training ground, and, and they tend to be obviously sort of the top end of the league, so they're competing for for that promotion. So it was something that I was, I was keen on, on doing anyway. Um, as I say, when I came in, technically, we didn't have any goalkeepers but um, obviously Lewis was his deal was pretty much done <clears throat> which was perfectly fine with me because I'd already had a list of goalkeepers if, if I'd have been staying at Oldham um, I already had a list of sort of goalkeepers that I was interested in for Oldham and, and Lewis was on my list anyway so when Matt obviously said that he was someone we were, we were quite far down the line with yeah great fantastic it, you know it ticked all the boxes for me anyway um, and then obviously it was finding another keeper and um, we, again we had a number of options but John is someone that I worked with previously at um, Forest Green Rovers um, and obviously since then has gone on to obviously Geisley but then got his step back up and ended up in League One with Accrington so again that worked well with me as well. Um, you've been like I say you've been in the role almost a year now um, how would you assess your time at the club so far? Yeah, it's been good. It's been very full on. Um, it's a very organised club in, in terms of um, sort of the structure of the club itself, but in particular in terms of the management team, Matt, Dan and Wayne in particular. Um, very good, very organised, very structured, uh, very detailed, um, very full on, which is which is great. Um, and, and, it, and obviously it's sort of worked well in terms of you know how well we've done in the league. So, um, yeah, it's been it's been really good, really enjoyable. And as I say, the area itself, Exeter, is a really nice place to, to work. Would you say anything surprised you about the club or the role at all? Um, probably the, the the depth of the work. So what I mean by that is, you know, I've been at Swindon, Forest Green, Walsall and Oldham. But I, and I keep saying this, this is the most intense in terms of the workload. Um, you know, the keepers have worked particularly hard across both in terms of obviously my sessions, but when they go in with the team and then... A lot of the club's um, extras have been very optional, shall we say, at, at the end of training. But at Exeter, it is optional. But to, but to be fair, I would say probably 90% of the players stay out and do their extras, whether that's centre-backs head and balls, whether it's wide players cross, practising their crossing, and obviously forwards and attacking players doing their finishing, which obviously brings the goalkeepers into play. So certainly the intensity of the in-training um, and the detail gone into is really good. Um, the sessions put on by the coaches are very good. Uh, Wayne and Dan are, are meticulous. Um, I give them a bit of banter about it, the way they set up and, and the detail they go into. They spend about an hour carrying about 50 mannequins in the morning out onto the training pitches. Um, but it's but it's very good. I mean, it's only banter, but it's, it is very good. And um, so it's, it's intense, but it but it's good. And when goalkeepers are mentioned, it's all um, the term goalkeepers union is mentioned a lot as well. Just how strong is that between um, you know the two, three of you? Because you spend so much time together, don't you? 
yeah it's massive I've, I've, every club i've been at is um it's been really really important to me it's important you get a, a good relationship with your goalkeepers a trusting relationship um always a very honest and open one you know i'm i'm not one that just thinks they're brilliant every every second of every day um so i'm always very straight with them in terms of if they've done something well i'll tell them and if they've done something that perhaps they could have done better then we'll have that conversation as well so we're, we're very honest and open and i think um they know where i stand and um you know it's important to me that you get on because like you say you do spend quite a lot of time with them on a on a smaller group basis than perhaps an outfield coach does with a bigger percentage of players and and say that that relationship relationship's really important it's been a bit of a strange season for um, Exeter's goalkeepers. I mean, both have had sort of longish injuries, haven't they, um, at different times? So has that been hard, quite hard to deal with? It's, it's been hard for both of them in a way. Obviously, they've both joined a new club um, and in pre-season... Both of them were, were excellent in pre-season in terms of training and games. And it, it could have been a toss of a coin who started the season. And, and both, um, you know, had every right to start the season. Obviously, uh, Lewis got, got the shirt and, and and Johnny was fantastic, just got on with his job. He understood the situation. Um, and, and Lewis started the season fantastically well and, and was flying. Um, and then, obviously, he picked up the injury at Crew, which was um, a massive blow for him. And, and it was a blow for the team. Um, but it, obviously, it did give Johnny the opportunity opportunity which he deserved as well um, he's come into the side the first game against Forest Green was excellent um, after that he, he was fine then he had a little dip in form um, in cup games more than league games he just had a little a few little mistakes crept in in some of the cup games but I thought he showed tremendous character to bounce back from that um, and, and he put in some fantastic performances and I, 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 I thought that showed a, a real strength of character for Johnny so then Johnny was flying by this stage Lewis was back and again, he was very patient, again, because he understood that, that Johnny was doing so well. He, he couldn't go into the manager's office and say, well, why aren't I playing? Because he understood that, that Johnny was playing well and, and deserved to keep the shirt. And then again, um, and unfortunately for Johnny, he's then gone down with the injury in the warm-up um, against Swindon, which he'd sort of slightly done against Port Vale, but thought he was OK. And then it just sort of flared up in, in the warm-up for Swindon. So again, Lewis got his, his opportunity and, and then Lewis came back into the side. Um, probably wasn't firing on the cylinders he was at the start of the season but at the same time not that he was making mistakes as such but probably didn't quite have the air of confidence he had at the start of the season but uh, that's understandable with you know with breaking your arm it's, it's an injury that I've done and um, it's not easy you've, you've got the, obviously the physical injury but also the psychological one when you first come back in terms of you're a little bit apprehensive at first dive and, and, and power on the ball and that, how's your arm going to react so but, but he's got over that and as I say before obviously the lockdown I think he was getting back into the swing of things really so it's it's been ups and downs for both of them but a lot of good good in that as well though I would say. It seems very rare that you'd have two keepers of such quality, uh, especially at our level. Are these, would you say these were two of the best keepers that you've worked with in your career? I've, I've said this to a number of people. Again, a lot of the clubs I've been at and a lot of the clubs you look at, particularly League One and definitely League Two and Conference, most clubs would have uh, what, we, what you'd define as an outright number one and then an outright number two, whether that's a young one coming up in the game or an old one coming down in the game. Um, but I firmly believe that we've got two number one goalkeepers. Like, you know, either can and play and I'm, I'm happy with either of them in, in the stick. So um, I think we are blessed at Exeter with, with two what I call first choice goalkeepers. And we kept 14 clean sheets in the league between the two of them, um, which is already an improvement on last season. You must be pleased with that. Yeah, I mean, obviously that's not just down to, to Johnny and Lewis, that the team as a whole, the defence, the midfield, and even the, the work the, the lads up front do is, is fantastic. It, it, it sort of goes to the goalkeepers often when they talk about clean sheets, but you know, I'm, I'm not stupid. It's, um, it is a team ethic thing, and, and the way the lads have defended, particularly in front of them, has, has um, helped them out. But then at the same time, obviously we'll go through these saves in a minute, it, you know, they, they've come to the fore as well, and, and they've dug in at certain times in the game as well. So it, it is a team thing. And you've, like you said, you've had goalkeeper and coach roles at Walsall, Swindon, Forest Green, Oldham and now City. Uh, what would you say has been your sort of standout moments during your coaching career? Uh, two Wembleys. Um, got to the League One playoff final with Swindon, uh, which was fantastic achievement. Uh, unfortunately, the day went very badly. We lost 4-0. So I experienced the lows of uh, defeat at Wembley and standing out there and watching Preston go up and collect the award was soul-destroying. But then two years later, bounced back with Forest Green, where we got promoted for the first time in the club's history, um, at, again at Wembley against Tranmere Rovers. So again, the, the feeling of walking up the, the steps... Um, 
was just surreal to be honest with you uh, I'm a play, my playing ground background was non-league so you know um, I've got quite a humble playing background if you like so I, I never imagined I'd get to Wembley once let alone twice and and to say to walk up those steps and, and pick up the medal it was very emotional I've got to say and, and the celebrations were fantastic so the highs and lows really you know one defeat and one win at Wembley. So um, I set you the challenge of picking your 10 best saves of the season so far, five for Lewis and five for Johnny. Um, and I thought it'd be good if we could get you to run through, you know, why you pick them and why they stand out to you. Um, so yeah. if we start with, start with Johnny first. Um, the first save you picked was uh, against one of your former employers in Forest Green. Uh, New Year's Day, a uh, penalty save in the second half. We were 1-0 up at this point, but down to 10 men. Um, after Nigel got sent off early in the second half. Um, why why does this one stand out to you? Uh, importance, really. Uh, obviously, it was a, a big game against uh, one of our rivals at the top end of the table, uh, both from myself, my own point of view, and for Johnny's point of view, obviously, both uh, both been at the club before. So you always want to do well against your, your former teams. Um, as you said, Nigel had been sent off. It was a very tight game, but obviously after the sending off, we were under the cosh quite a bit. Um, and, and so obviously when you can see the penalty, you know, you think, oh, crikey, what's going to happen here? So although if you look at the penalty save itself, some people might say oh, it's a nice height for a goalkeeper. I think me personally, I think any penalty save is a good save. Um, and I think it's just the importance of it within the game, obviously helping us go on to win that game 1-0. Um, in terms of, you know, I've got to give Johnny massive credit because as much homework as I can do, Liam Shepherd is one one person I've not actually seen any data or any penalties taken from him. So I couldn't I couldn't even give any Johnny any help on that one. So it was purely down to his intuition, his guesswork, um, reading that reading his run up, and he has actually got a good uh, penalty saving record, Johnny, from from his time at you know Geisley and, and Accrington. Um, so all, all credit to Johnny. He's read it well. He's made the save. But the, the big thing for me was the importance of, of that save in, in, in relation to the game. And in your playing days, what sort of goes through your mind? You know, when you're about to face someone from the spot, do you try and psych them out, or do you have certain do players tend to have certain ways that they kind of you know approach penalties? I always, I mean, let's say I played non-league, so I didn't have uh, homework or anything done for me. So I found it quite hard because it's like, do you guess? Do you try and read the, the taker? And that there's a lot of um, people who think they can read penalty takers. And I don't, I don't think it's an easy thing to do. So um, it, it is very difficult. Um, as I say, nowadays with, with all the, the technology, we try and give the, the goalkeepers a heads up on where we feel they're going to go. But I always say to the goalkeepers, ultimately, I can give you all the stats, but ultimately it's you, you're out there. It's your decision. You decide whether you go with the stats or whether there's something that you spot that you feel he's going to go a particular way so um, but as I say on the day you know credit to Johnny he's, he's made that save off his own back Absolutely uh, number four uh, another save and a 1-0 victory for City um, near post reaction save and a 1-0 win over Grimsby back in January um, there was quite a lot to pick from that game as well wasn't there but how, why did that one stand out to you? Um, again, I think you'll see a theme in the, in the saves that I've picked. You'll see a theme in terms of the importance of the save. So it's, you know, there, there was a save that Johnny made at uh, Scump Up Away, which I could quite easily put in there in terms of the quality of the save. But we lost the game three one. You know, some of the saves that, you, that I'm, I'm showing are, uh, are saves that have helped us go on to win the game. Um, it was early in the second half, so um, obviously they probably just got a rocket off of Ian Holloway. They came out all guns blazing. Um, the cross was whipped in, and it was whipped in flat and quick into the near post area so it wasn't really a cross that Johnny could come for so he's had to stay and then I think it's probably four or five yards out that the lad's got the header um, and so it's it's a, it's a fantastic reaction save it could go across him into the right hand side it could go near post so he's he's got to stand for as long as he can and then react to wherever that header goes and I thought he did it fantastically well and it, it, it proved crucial again in, in a one nil victory away from home. I think in some of these situations you can tell just how good a save it is by the reaction of his teammates I think, I don't know if it was Aaron or Pierce, who was hooked the ball away afterwards and just the sheer relief, you know, when they embrace. Yeah, I tend to, you tend to look at a few factors. You'll look at the teammates, straight away they'll go and congratulate him. You look at the reaction of both the home fans and the away fans. You look at the reactions of, of the Grimsby players, the Grimsby management, you know, head in hands and things like that. It, it, it just sort of shows how good the save was, really. Uh, number three, yeah, another 1 0 win, this time away at Salford in December. Um, and for me, I think this is a very impressive one. Uh, if you talk us through it. Yeah, this is this is quite an interesting one because I might come across as a little bit harsh here. But um, 
not so much when it happened, but when I watched it back on the video, I actually questioned Johnny afterwards whether he could have come for the cross. Um, it was an in, it was an in swinging ball, and if you look where the lads headed the ball from, he's probably four or five yards out, just off of centre. So I, my first thought was actually, could you have come and affected the cross in the first place? But in fairness to Johnny, that like the difficulty was the pace on the ball, but also because of where we've had to hold the defensive line, there's a lot of bodies in there, so it would be quite difficult it's not a ball hung up in the air it's really whipped in quite flat amongst bodies it, it would have been difficult for Johnny to come um, he's made the decision not to come but then he's still got to react and he's just an incredible reaction save so you know for me my uh, griping about whether he should have come for the cross he's, he's kept the ball at the back of the net which is what it's all about so you know again all credit for Johnny for that. In some respects is it down to good positioning as well um, to be in the right place to make that save? Exactly. I mean, first and foremost, you've got to decide, can I come and affect the cross? If I can't affect the cross, then you've got to decide right now, I've got to take up my position where I feel the ball is likely to go. And, and that's what he's done. And he's, he's positioned himself really well. But I think he's got his arm or his shoulder up and, and just managed to get it up and over the bar. It was just an incredible save, really. Um, and number two, we go back to the new lawn in January. Um, a stunning save towards the end of the game down to Johnny's right. I think the ball almost ends up out the stadium, doesn't it? Yeah, again, back to, as I said about the first, you know, the penalty save in the Forest Green game, it was the importance of it. This was in the 68th minute. They were they were really applying the pressure by this stage. Um, he, he's, he's got a cross. Uh, he's got a left footed shot from, I think it was probably about 12, 10 yards out. Um, and, and the big key thing for me was he's hardly had a back lift and, and he's just suddenly he's got the shot off so quickly, which can catch a goalkeeper out. And with that, he also got a lot of pace on the ball, momentum on the ball. And John is a, a big, strong lad. But as I say, as you said yourself, it's gone right up and over the crossbar. And again, another fantastic save, another reaction save. And again, a save that's gone on to help us win that game 1-0. And then number one for you, um, Forest Green again. I hope none of their fans are watching this video. Um, Johnny seems to love playing against his former club as well. But I think this was this the first game that he came in for Lewis? Awesome. Yeah, exactly. So, like I say, that you know, he'd, he'd waited his, his time and it just worked out that the first game he was going to make his Football League debut for Exeter was against his former club at home. Again, another big game. And this was 76th minute, a game we've won 1 0. Um, and again, he, he's had to be at the near post for where, where the ball's being delivered from. So, he had to position in the near post area. And it's and again, it's whipped him with quite a lot of pace. It's not hung up. So, again, the big thing for me on this save is his speed across the goal. And he's it's centre of the goal, and he, so he's got to literally he's got to try and make himself as big as he possibly can because that that header could be going anywhere. So his speed across the goal was fantastic. He's literally just thrown himself, spread himself as big as he can, almost sort of Michael esque if you like. And and he's obviously he's got something on it and, and kept the ball out. And again, I repeat, one nil win, seventy six minute, and, and he's helped us keep a clean sheet and win a, a very important game. And it was certainly the, the Forest Green show for for Johnny this season, uh, home and away against Forest Green and uh, I enjoyed it and I know I know he did. I'm assuming all these saves are much sweeter when they come in with a clean sheet attached to them. Yeah, 100%. As I say, uh, you know, when I looked at the saves, you know, referencing the Scunthorpe save, it was a great save at Scunthorpe, but we lost the game 3-1. So you have to look at the importance of some of these saves as well. As I say, we've defended well as a team, but when he's been needed, you know, he's, cut, he's come to the fore and, and, and helped to help the boys keep a clean sheet. And now moving on to Lewis, um, at number five, you picked a reaction save from him against Newport County uh, in the league back in September. Game ended in a one-all draw, but talk us through that one. Yeah, again, so a good point away from home because Newport's a very difficult place to go. Um, it was quite central, a central strike, um, but it was, again, hit with quite a bit of venom. And, you know, Ward is, what, six foot five, but he's managed to get down really low very, very quickly, which is which is a problem for a six foot five goalkeeper. And you can see it was such a sharp reaction save. If you actually see, he's actually, the ball's almost behind him, but he still managed to get a strong hand on it. So, he couldn't obviously parry it too far away because it's you know he's literally reaching behind him, but he's got a strong enough hand on it to keep the ball out. And then obviously Sweens has done well defensively to to step in and just just you know clear the rest of it up. But for a six foot five guy to get down as sharp as he did and have the strength to keep the ball out was, was you know really good. Uh, number four was a fine save against Portsmouth at Fratton Park in the Leasing.com Trophy semi final uh, on in front well in front of the TV cameras as well. But um, what stood out for you on this one? 
Yeah, um, obviously the, the result didn't go for us on that night, so it wasn't so much the importance of the save, but at the time it was extremely tight in the game. It was very end-to-end. As you've said, it was on you know live cameras, Sky Sports cameras. I think there was, what, 17,000 there. It was a frantic game, and um, the big thing for me with this was it was a ball that was cut back, and I was where I was sat in the dugout, I was ro- almost right behind the line of it, so I saw it just you know almost in slow motion in my eyes. Um, but the, the players come on to it with um, first time and hit it with such venom from a reasonably close range. And, and Lewis is trying to get across from his near post area. And it, it's come at him with so so much pace. He's, he's not actually going to get a hand on it. He's actually just literally had to almost lift his arm up. And he's actually got part of his arm on the ball and, and made that reaction save again. So again, it was a very reactionary save with a lot of pace, but he's managed to get his position in, into, into line with the ball as quick as he possibly could. So again, another terrific save. For number three, at three, again, early in the season, um, away at Stevenage, I think it's quite early on in the game. Um, What stood out to you about this save? Again, importance. Uh, It was a 1-0 victory. It was quite early in the season um, and it was early in the game. So that that could have had a major impact because if we go a goal down early in the game, it could change the the structure of the game, really. So, um, again, it was a first-time strike, uh, hit with venom and probably about 12 yards out but he's he's got across really well and, and he's made a very strong parry so if you watch where the ball goes it doesn't just drop into a dangerous zone for a potential follow-up he gets both angle and distance on the save so again going back to that importance one nil victory away from home and, and that save could have proved uh, crucial in the outcome of the game it was quite an athletic save as well isn't it i think that's the kind of thing that kind of sticks out to fans when they see you know a keeper diving about yeah, definitely. Six foot five. But again, he's reacted very quickly to it because it was a first time shot hit with pace and uh, he's reacted really, really well to it. So second uh, was Lewis uh, against Macclesfield earlier in the first day of the season. Um, quite early on, I think it was quite early on in the game, but a cor- corner comes in and headed towards goal. I think it gets knocked on, headed on again and Lewis makes a fine reaction save from the... Yeah, again, opening day of the season, home game, making his debut for the club, (coughs) Um, 23rd minute of the game. Uh, As you said, it's got flicked on from a corner. And again, Lewis has got across very quickly. I think the lad must have been about three yards out. So he's he's reacted fantastically to to be effective and keep the ball out. Um, And again, I just go back to that importance. I sound like a broken record, but the importance of that save early in the game, early in the season. And again, we go on to win the game 1-0. So it's, it's a crucial moment in the game. For a keeper making a debut, a one 0 victory must be the perfect, you know, result really. Yeah, exactly. It's his, you know, home debut in the league. Um, he wants to get off to a good start. He wants to impress the fans. He wants to do well for himself and his family. And uh, yeah, I think he, he he came off that game very pleased with his uh, performance and obviously the result and the clean sheets. So it was it was great great start for him. Uh, and your number one for Lewis. Um, it was a, a mo- one of the most recent one from the. All ten. Um, a save in City's one or draw against Crawley in February. Um, it looked like, to me like he showed great speed and awareness to get across his box and smother the guy, you know, coming in with the shot. Yeah, definitely. This was probably why I topped it as the um, as the top save for me. Um, again, one one with Crawley, who were doing well at the time, so another important result for us. And again, his positioning as they've broken down the left hand side, he's, he's got to position himself in his near post area because there is the potential of the shot or the cutback. Obviously, uh, it's cut back, and from there, if you watch him again, I go back to the fact that you know Lewis is six foot five. He's got to get a six foot five frame across that goal. So he's not only got a cross, he's also got out and press the ball and and obviously got in the in the forward's face very quickly and just shown that bravery to just stand big block the ball take the ball you know he didn't know where it was going to go it's hitting full in the chest could have taken it in the face and again he's, he's made a fantastic save but to, to to get the speed across the goal that someone who's six foot five is I, I thought that that was for me what what really stood out for me in this save and that's why I've, I've put that as his number one save I'm going to put you on the spot here now as well. And if you had to pick just one, one of the ten, what's been your standout one of the season, would you say? Or what one are you most proud of? Oh, that's a horrible question, really, because <laughs> when you asked me to do this, I sort of thought, I'll try and divide it. You know, you said ten saves, so I divided it into five and five for the both of them. Um, and they're both excellent keepers and both have performed um, very, very well for us. So I, I don't want to be seen to be having a favourite, really. Um, I could sit on the fence as I say, I do think the the two of the saves that uh, the two Forest Green saves for Johnny 
I think were were really really top draw and that's taking nothing away from from Lewis's but if you really put me on the spot I probably would have to go with those uh, those two saves for for Forest Green the away one um and the uh, the home one for, for Johnny I, I've got to be honest They're, they would be my my top ones really um, and after matches how do you assess performance and how do you go back through the games you know do you literally go through looking through every single save or is it specific to parts of the game yeah I've, I've got a process uh, which I've followed for a number of years now I, I do I've done my own stat sheet um, every single game I've been involved in I think I've got 294 stat sheets now over the years um, and so during the game I'll, I'll make um, you know statistics of you know whether it's they've made a save whether they've come for a cross whether the distribution so everything they do in the game is noted down uh, which I put on my laptop and then that evening I, I whatsapp it across to them so both of us know exactly in terms of numbers what they've had to do um, and then off the back of that I'll then go through the game when I get the clips through and I'll look at again everything positives negatives question mark areas so I'll, I'll obviously look at the things that the goalkeepers have done well I'll look at the things where I think well maybe they could have done better there and then there's always there'll always be a gray area where I'm not sure why they've made a certain decision or or could they have done this or could they have done that so that's at that point when I, when I sit down with the goalkeepers and we go through those clips it's important that I emphasise what they've done well in the game. It's important, obviously, I say, what well, could you have done this? Could you have done that a little bit better? And we have a very open discussion about that. And as I say, there'll be the grey area ones where I might view it in a certain way from where I'm sat on the bench or watching it back on my laptop. But there might be a, a reason within the game why the goalkeeper's done something that I haven't taken into consideration or what their thought process was. So we, we have a very open discussion about, you know, the good, the bad and the, and the, and the, and the middle parts, really. So it's it's important that we reflect back on how they've done. And as I say, it's it's not just a case of saying, oh, you've done fantastic every game because they need to learn. They need to try and improve. And, and so, as I say, we have a very, very open dialogue and a very honest and, and um, trusting dialogue between us as a goalkeeping coach and as a goalkeeper. And, and that's how we sort of view it back, really, and reflect and think, right, OK, what, what can we do differently next time? So I, there's a prime example, really. I think Bradford away, Johnny took a little bit of criticism for a goal conceded at the back post. Um, and when it happened in the game, my first question mark was, well, why hasn't he come for that cross or could he have come for that cross? That was my instinct. But it's only when you sort of sit back and watch it on the video afterwards, it wasn't so much he could have come for that cross from where he was. The problem was actually his starting position in relation to the ball. So he, hadn't get, he was a little bit too tight to his near post. The ball's out wide left. He was a little bit too tight to the near post. So when that ball's been delivered, and it's been delivered with quite a lot of pace, he hasn't been able to get across his goal and try and come and affect the cross. So he's had to just try and make the save. So we looked at that and we, and we looked at his start position. And, and if he'd have started probably only two steps a little bit deeper, he probably would have been able to come and affect that cross. So again, it was something we looked at, something we worked on in then training and, and something we just tried to pinpoint and, and, and develop really. So it is crucial. Having the, the video um, access is really important because the picture you see at that moment within the game gives you one idea and one picture, but the reality when you look at it back can be, can be slightly different. So um, yeah, that, that's something that sort of sticks out in my mind is that goal at Bradford. I mean, this situation is very difficult for footballers, um, you know, having to train, suddenly train uh, individually and stuff. What kind of, uh, how difficult is that going to be for a goalkeeper? You know, it must be hard to train singly. Yeah, it's 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 been very difficult for, for our goalkeepers. Um, they've all got different situations. Um, I suppose if I start with Jared, who's Swindon-based, um, he's got his own home gym, so straight away he's got some equipment that he can work with. Um, his brother is a, a goalkeeper in non-league as well, so he's got someone that he can work with, whether it's in the back garden or if they go out and do their exercise, they can, they can work with. Um, so he's got someone who can serve, they can work each other. So he's probably been in the best position of the lockdown period um lewis um has got a small back garden but he's got his dad and his brother who can do some sorts of service um but again he's limited on space so it's it's very difficult you can do a little bit of handling of the ball but you can't do a great deal um and johnny's probably in the most awkward position he, he's the only person that can serve for him is either his dog or his girlfriend <laughs> Um, so, so he's probably been at the hardest of the three in terms of access to, to service. Obviously, all three of them have been doing physical work that, that Connor's set them. Um, but I don't really want them doing too much road running because it's, it's just not good for your joints. And it's, it's not really the type of 
physical work that a goalkeeper needs. They need more short, sharp, explosive type work. So I've encouraged them if they can to do a, a Joe Wicks type of workout, uh, an anaerobic workout. Um, but obviously, you know, a, a jog or a long walk is quite good for the general general fitness, shall we say. But the hardest part is the rhythm of, of just your goalkeeping movements, your short, sharp, explosive movement, even down to the point of making your dives. Um, people sort of underestimate you know, the physical problems it causes your body hitting the deck day in day out and so when you don't do it for a while and then you go back to doing it it's oh god that hurt. so you know just for them to be able to be able to do their handling to be able to do their diving it has been obviously very difficult and as i say johnny's probably been in the most difficult of, of situations jared's probably been had the best situation and, and lewis is um as they adapted with it with his dad and his brother but um yeah it's certainly been testing for them but i mean obviously it's been testing for, for everybody outfield players goalkeepers and, and everyone else so they've just had to adapt and overcome as they say um, and just finally, how have you been keeping in touch with them mainly? Is it through like, you know, Zoom and WhatsApp and things like that? Yeah, so across the course of the lockdown, it's been a, a mixture of things, really. Um, we've had, um, you know, Zoom meetings. We've had WhatsApp chats because we've got a, a goalkeeping union WhatsApp group. Um, and, and I've obviously I've uh, rang them a few times as well just to, to check how they are, both, you know, family and, and what they're up to. Um, but I've also given them plenty of downtime in terms of I didn't want to be literally ringing them up and contacting them every day and feel as though I'm on their case because I think the downtime's just as important and the rest is just as important as the work they do as well. So I've tried to balance out when I've made contact with them, but I've certainly stayed in contact with them across the different formats and just to check on the work they've been doing, but also from a social point of view and check they're all you know okay and happy and have a bit of banter and, and keep that relationship going really. Well, thanks for your time. Um, you're pretty active on social media on Twitter, um, especially replying to City fans. So you can rest assured that you're going to get some comments from this of people probably disagreeing with you. So just as long as you're prepared for those. Yeah, that's fine. No problem at all. It's all about opinions, isn't it? <laughs> Brilliant. Thanks, Steve. No problem. Good to see you.